Oh, this is a bit different then. I'm Lee Mazza Morris and I fish for DNA baits. The great expectations then. Well, I think we all have these, no matter what trip it is, whether that be at home or abroad. But I guess when you're gonna be traveling out to somewhere like Slovenia, then I feel like you're always gonna have great expectations. I'm Salvo from Nomad by Fate and uh, I fish for DNA baits for uh, quite some years now. In 2016 I decided with uh, Vita, my girlfriend, to move in the amazing green Slovenia. This was a decision made for the love for uh, wildlife photography and of course for fishing. I thought about uh, three different venues. In the Lake Mola, which is a very wild variage, we can consider it and call it like a little Cassian. Here we have two amazing water. One is the little river that flows in the city and one is a very famous lake called Rudnisko, but uh, many of you will uh, just know it by the name of a Bear Lake. In Lake Mola, there's a lot, a lot of carp. Here the wild stock of fish is very huge. Lake Mola was our first venue to fish and with the evening drawing in quick, it was time to get some rod set for the night ahead. Now getting boilies out to Slovenia was a case of ordering through Bath Europe. They can send bait to any address out in Europe, so we had our bait sent to Salvo's house prior to the trip. I was already set when uh, Moz arrived and basically already in, at the first evening in the darkness I managed to, to land my very first cup. It was a mirror chunk and it was very, very good fighter and so much fun. The bottom bait gone. Yeah. <laughs> Made it, first one. More to come. Salvo wasn't wrong when he said there would be more to come. There's no better feeling than catching your first fish, not only from a new venue, but from a country I've never fished in before. Special capture this carp and little did I know I was about to meet a lot more of the residents that swim around in Lake Mauler. SLK Bollocks Rig was repositioned onto the bar which ran off from the point on the opposite bank. The bar was actually only about nine foot deep now, either side of this bar, which was only about a rod length in width, was 25 foot of water either side. 10 handfuls of SLK in a confined area, I find baiting tighter from a boat, instead of spreading it around, gets you quicker bites. Placing the rod on the rest before I could even attach the swinger arm, it was away in my hand. This is why I love to bait in a tight zone via the boat. Rather than spreading the bait about, you'll definitely get quicker bites. Chimes in the background, playing a fish on what is absolute epic scenery. Life don't get much better than this, let me tell you. Amazing, amazing place. And it's already been a chaotic morning this morning. Put the rods back out, did have a bite early hours of this morning got the rods back out and they just keep going which is lovely absolutely lovely i've just landed one from the boat lovely scaly looking one and fingers crossed we can get this one in and he's just as nice as his mate down there yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lovely jubbly. Look at that for a cup. Scaly, beautiful Slovenian mirror. Absolutely incredible. With a mega, mega boat battle with him as well. Now the plan for this trip is to visit a few venues that Slovenia has to offer. We may even end up at a river. But all the while that's going on, I'm more than happy to be catching beautiful looking fish like this one. Also, had a ghosty not so long ago as well similar sort of size to this one and yeah life does not get much better than that amazing After the first fish in the evening, then for the whole night and the morning after, basically uh, there was all quiet and silent. My rod stopped to, to having runs and so on, so I decided to make some refreshing on bait uh, and so on, and also to change the spot, basically using some uh, uh, double SLK hard hookers on one rod and uh, the bug and half tone snowman on the other one, and that will be a very good choice. Wow, do you come back on the clutch? You yeah. not get line twist? No. Really? Honestly, I never experienced it. Before. Never. No, it's much better for me, to be honest. Really? <laughs> never seen that before. <laughs> really? No. I mean, if I just open bail, yeah, yeah. holding up, it doesn't give me feeling that. Uh, I mean, I know that I will just set the rod on the on the sticks. And then I have to wait uh, half an hour or so to get stretched properly. Uh, I don't feel comfy with that. I knew that I had to be very quickly in dropping the rods because there was a very big storm coming. And uh, I know that once they're coming, they're gonna hit hard. We got lucky with the storm as it just skimmed past us. I kept my rods out of the water whilst we did some filming with Salvo. quickly got both rods back onto the spots in case the storm come back our way. And it wasn't long until I was in again. Left hand rods just busted off. It's not taken long. We had a bit of a storm come over, so after putting them two fish back, that ghosty and that beautiful scaly one, gave the swim a bit of a rest, let the storm pass, and yeah, dropped the rod back out there. It's taken a minute, maybe two minutes, for this rod to bust back off. All I'm using is the bollocks rig over the top, and about five or six handfuls of 18 mil S7, and that is what is doing the do for me at the minute. These carp are absolutely loving that bait out there. The rods were flying off left, right and centre and a massive shoal of commons had just descended on the two spots that I was fishing. And it just felt like I was a million miles away from getting a better one. Now I like catching fish, obviously, but you know, when you're having to go out in the boat, come back all the time, you know, having a redrop, fresh rigs and all that jazz, it just, it makes life a lot harder when you're getting multiple bites, especially from small ones. And I just, I don't know where a better one was coming from, to be honest. Well, there we have it. What could possibly be the last fish of the evening, maybe. This is a similar size to all the bites that have been getting today. Their mirrors seem to have disappeared and a lot of these commons have turned up now, but nice to be getting bites all the same. 
Let's hope that monster turns up this evening though, that would be nice. Right, let's slip him back. And voila, here we go. If this is how we approach the evening, I'm very happy and satisfied. It has been a very busy day, to be honest, catching quite many fishes, not huge, but this is very good fighter. In any case, if you are fighting them from the shore or just go out with the boat, it's very, very good fun. Now, yeah, this is the second mirror that I had just in a row. And I have to say that, uh, wow, I just hope that we can go a little bit higher eventually with the size, but it doesn't really matter because still they are so beautiful to see and every single fish is a special character. So let's see how we can keep going this right for the, for the night. And the uh, second thing also, we just better to get some food in our stomachs. This venue then, uh, how long have you fished here for? Oh, first time I've been fishing here, it was 2016 something like that so it's some time now I'm fishing right, here fished it a while then the first year I was fishing here most I can say I started fishing in the winter time autumn and winter time so everything was more difficult of course but um, since I had this view in front of me just can you imagine this landscape yeah. all covered by uh, red orange and yellow is what it was just amazing since then I started uh, fishing with uh, Vita and uh, no matter what, what, what was the fish is inside, the size and so on, we were so uh, happy and just to land such pristine fishes in such a very good, very nice environment. So mm. since then it was, uh, can I say, we totally fell in love with this place. Yeah. As I said, no matter what the, the size of the fish is, when we come here it's just for the spirit of adventure. Uh, the spirit to be really in, the, in a place in the middle of nowhere because yeah. barely we have a signal on the phone here so basically yeah it's just uh, a very peaceful place uh, and uh, not really that peaceful because when the fish start biting as you can see it's a proof <laughs> yeah. that uh, really you'd not have time not even to have some lunch or some drink and something like that so yeah this is some of the reason why we really love a venue like this. Yeah, no, it's a special place. It is a really special place. It's it's quite atmospheric, isn't yeah. it? It's like, it it's feels true. really atmospheric, obviously because of the tall hills that you've got behind, the massive trees that overtower yeah. you as well. But the wildlife here, yeah. So I, I hear that there's a few bears that sort of run. Yeah, I would say more than few actually. <laughs> well, just to say some uh, some numbers in Slovenia, there's more than thousand bears. Right. If you consider how big, how small is the country, and uh, still how vast is the forest all around, it's um, it's quite an impressive number. But uh, yeah, not only about the, the the bears that you may have encounters while you are on a fishing trip. There's many other uh, animals as a deer, uh, uh, birds of prey, in eagle. In the night you can be awakened, but not only by the bite alarm, but also by some owls, yeah, <laughs> which has happened to me quite often. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, mean, I mean, this is the when I say the spirit of the of the adventure that uh, you really are immersed into something that probably we get to we get used to to imagine when we were kids probably the adventure and to see some wildlife wild animal like this uh, and uh, yeah why not this is another aspect why the fishing uh, lead me to uh, to some kind of a childhood you know yeah yeah and for sure. that's amazing to be yeah, honest definitely totally amazing yeah. yeah love that love that this night we have ahead some more catches will keep coming and uh, again it can be a surprise whatever we catch uh, it can be a surprise definitely yeah definitely. wicked wicked Cheers mate. Some more cods. Yep. Good morning on what is probably going to be our last morning 
on this beautiful venue and playing a carp with that mist rolling off the water and the clouds low in amongst the trees life don't get much better than this it really doesn't it's absolutely glorious here such beautiful mornings you get and yeah we're off to pastures new today in the hope of more Slovenian giants so or Slovenian giants should I say but yeah this place has been very kind to us we've caught some beautiful carp here but we want to explore Slovenia a little bit more and that is what the plan is for today so let's hope we can get this fish in get him shown to you guys and then hit the road there is a perfect way to end what's been an amazing couple of days on this venue so we're off to somewhere new now to carry on this amazing adventure in the wonderful country that is Slovenia mega Now at a new venue, a very new one for me to be honest because we're at a river. I've never actually caught river carp before and I've not really fished for river carp much either to be honest. I have only fished for them once which was last year on the river lot and I did an overnighter and had a 40 pound catfish so um, yeah all the while I was hoping and praying it was going to be a carp but knowing full well it was a cat. So we've moved on to this lovely stretch of river. It's a little, little bit urban, I suppose. There's a few flats and what have you in the background, but it's a gorgeous part of the river all the same. Not much flow to it, this one, which is why I'm basically gonna go in with exactly what I was using on the other lake. I'm gonna use the bollocks rigs. Uh, I've got one out by a set of pads here. I've just wrapped a little PVA bag around the hook link and chuck that out it's got some slk liquid in it and then i'm going to fish one down this wall to my left hand side here so i'm going to get this rod this final rod all sorted i've already got one out into the river and then um hopefully get this one out before it starts pouring with rain which is just about to do <laughs> Uh, I fished this river for a um, few years now mm, and basically I have to say that uh, I prefer to fish this river basically when it's uh, uh, springtime before the very heat of the summer and then after the summer mm, for many reasons. Here there's a lack of uh, rain in the last years so basically this is gonna be a problem for the oxygen for the fishes because it's very shallow water and once there's no flowing water in this river basically it's all uh, still and uh, basically I don't really like to fish uh, on these conditions. So the tactics I was going to fish with 
is basically something that it works very very well for me all the time then i just make some solid big pvi bags with some crushed slk with a lot a lot of uh, liquid food in the bag and this is something that basically it's a, a run 100 percent Okay, right, what a start. Amazing, amazing feeling. Just after I cast the rods out in the late evening, yesterday night, and then baiting a little bit the area, not just being abundantly. And uh, yeah, just in the night, I had no sleep at all, to be honest, but not because of many carp landed, but just there was many small fishes and tensions all over the, the rigs. On my area but then suddenly the silence was break up again by a very powerful and strong run and on a majestic fight about 20 minutes before i can manage to land this proper beast of a wild river mirror cup amazing time really really happy with this one i can see it's, it, it's looking very old fish and for a small water like this a 15 kilo plus fish is totally a great reward very very happy with this result now i'm gonna take quick shots of this amazing fish and then we we'll just put it back in the water where he's belong that ended up being a quiet night for myself last night then other than obviously that beautiful one that salvo had this morning yeah it's been really really quiet sort of this side of that island yeah i think the fish aren't here anymore i'm no river expert of course but i feel like well i know that they've pushed the other side of the bridge been up there we've seen a few carp up there and i think a move is in order we've only got a few more hours left for today before we have to well we don't have to but before we end up going to another lake so i think it moves in order for the next few hours at least we're going to get packed up from here and then head over to another part of this river which is picturesque there's a huge church there in the background lovely backdrop so it'd be mega to get one from there and it'd be mega to get my first river carp as well desperate to get a river carp not had one yet as i've already mentioned and uh, that's still the case at the moment. So I think these fish have done me off, so I think we're gonna do the same. That river was something special, and after seeing that one that Salvo had caught, I was just absolutely desperate to get one for myself. I opted to fish with snowman hook baits with SLK bottom bait and a bug half tone with a little mesh bag of some whole SLKs. Fished one rod near some pads in the middle of the river and then went in the search of some bubblers to see what I could find. I noticed some pads twitching in the edge, so I decided to drop my second rod here. Oh, nothing happened on that river and I was absolutely gutted. I've never wanted to catch a carp so much in all my life. And the fact that I've never caught a river carp as well and having them sort of backdrops, gutted, 
absolutely gut and I fished my heart out as well along that second part of the stretch. I was up and down that stretch and I just, I just couldn't buy a bite on there. So we hit the road once again for our last ditched attempt in the hope of catching a Slovenian giant. Well, our last dance then. Unfortunately, the river wasn't so kind to me. So I'm hoping that our final venue from this adventure is going to be more kind than what the river was. Salvo's gone home now. He's gonna join us tomorrow for some food and he's left us on this beautiful lake that is behind me, which they nickname Bear Lake. We've had to wait in the car park, unfortunately, last night in the hope to get into this swim because the lake is extremely busy. So we decided to leave the river yesterday. We spent the night in the car park in the hope to get in this swim that we're now finally set up in. Now this lake is extremely, extremely deep. So trying to get your head round the swim, swing back to where you've got a spot to, it's all a bit of a minefield to be honest, but we're gonna try our very best to put bait exactly where we're gonna put rigs. Now it drops down into 30 odd foot of water straight off in front of the swim in front of me here, which is peg two and I've already been out in the boat, I've put the marker float out there, I've baited up a little bit, I've then wrapped up the spod rod to what it is. It's about a rod length and a half difference to where you actually put your fishing rod. So it's all a bit of a minefield getting everything right. You've got to make sure that the rod's in the exact same position, of course, but there's some monsters that live in here. This is why I need to get this right in the hope that we can get that final fish for this adventure. So my opening gambit for this lake is gonna be a couple of Evo SLK hook baits, which I prepared ages ago. These are probably about six months old. These are, the longer you leave them, the better they are. So I'm gonna fish a bollocks rig. Now I've never actually cast a bollocks rig before, but because it's only sort of nine wraps out to the very bottom of the shelf in 30 foot of water, uh, I'm in the hope that this actually won't tangle. I'll be able to see it in the air quite clearly at that sort of range. So I'm going to actually wrap the hook bait up with some foam just so that it separates itself. The issue you'll get with the bollocks rig is that the hook latches itself back over the hook bait. So if I put a load of foam around there, then we should get away with it. So that's the opening plan. Now they like lots and lots of bait here. They love the noise of the spod. So I'm gonna be spodding every sort of 20, 30 minutes, put five or six spots out there. But to start with, on the spots, I'm gonna drop two bottles of liquid down there, a few handfuls, of the Maxi Mix pellets. I've soaked that in some hydro spot syrup as well. So as that's falling down, it's gonna be clouding up the water quite nicely in that depth. I'm in the hope that it's gonna to get to the very bottom there, but I'm a little unsure in that depth of water. But what it will do is it will stop the roach from pinging all of the hook baits about. Because what I've found when I've gone out there and baited up is that there's loads and loads of roach that come up and they grab the boilies and they're pinging about everywhere. So if you poured liquid down, chuck the bait in through the liquid column, they don't see it as much as what they would do if you just chucked it in straight from the boat. So that's the plan with that one. And then like I say, I'm just gonna spot over every 20 minutes. So let's get these rods in the water. The rain's been relentless today. Hopefully that is it for the rest of the day. Although at the back there, it looks a bit stormy. With the night passing uneventfully, I was up at first light to ring the dinner bell via the spawn. I was hoping that the noise and the fresh feed would encourage a bite, although it seemed like the whole lake had shut up shop. I'm not gonna lie, after not getting one that first night and the first morning, I just sort of felt like 
is just trip over, you know. The whole lake seemed like it just completely shut up shop. Uh, we had Jamie Klossick and Jason Can. They were next door to us. They had stopped getting bites as well. And all the while, I'm just thinking, ah, oh, is this going to happen? I was wondering as well whether I was actually fishing my rigs exactly where I was baiting because it was, I think it was about 37 foot deep, eight wraps out to be precise, and trying to get that swing back right, you know, because obviously if you hit the clip at the same distance you're spawning at, you're going to be miles away from actually where you're putting the feed. So trying to work that out was just an absolute minefield. And I spoke to a few of the guys that fish it regular, and they hit the clip and then undo the bail arm and just let it drop. And I'm like, I can't do that. I, I, I have to fill the rod down. So then I just, I was just wondering, have I not got a bite because I'm not getting this swing back right? And, and I just couldn't fathom the exact way of getting that right in that depth of water. The sunshine, and when the sunshine, also the fire gets started. And on the fire, we have some meat. After some traditional Slovenian food, Salvo decided to get his drone up and he noticed a lot of fish in the shallow bay to our left. Now I know people like to criticise drones, boats, echo sounders, whatever you know we all use nowadays to help ourselves catch fish, but you know, when someone, when your mate's flown a drone and then he's seen a group of carp just to the left, you know, the, the swim to our left was peg one, which was where Jamie and Jason Cam were. And there's this shallow bay, which everyone uses for the boat launch. So luckily I sort of I went round and said to Jay, look, we've seen a load of fish in this left hand side. Is there any chance that I could fish in there for our remaining 36 hours in the hope to obviously salvage this trip? Ready? Oh, well, this bite has been a long time coming. It's been a tough trip, it has, but finally, we've managed to hook one. Whether we land it or not is another story. So I've had to come out in the boat because he's, uh, he's got himself caught up on something out here. What, I'm unsure of. There is a few rocks and bars and God knows what else in this bay to my left here. So oh, let's hope we can get this one in, man. It has been really tough really tough so right let's see if we can get this what's that gone around oh there he is he's sat on the bottom there look oh, i think he's wrapped around twice what's he done here he's wrapped around that pole <laughs> Die it off. Oh, it's cut me off. Ah, oh, the trials and tribulations of carp fishing. You wait all this time to get a bite and he wrapped around one, of, there's like a bar out here and he'd wrapped around one of the stakes that's on the bar. I could see him sat on the bottom, 30 pound common. And um, he'd just gone round it a couple of times. So I'd, as I was undoing it, he bolted off. So I undone the bail arm quickly so that it wouldn't cut me off, but it must have been too tight around the actual stake itself and done me. Oh, I gutted, it's came off. Ah. Oh, it's one of them things, man. You know, it's just, it's carp fishing, I guess. You've got to just suck it up and uh, carry on going. Damn. I'm gonna have to let him run. 
I haven't had the chance, mate. We need to get in. Yeah. Right, we need to get in this boat, mate, and get through this gap. Um, I haven't tightened that other rod at all. Oh, he's ram right out here, ideal. Oh, well, unfortunately, obviously, we lost that last one that I hooked. I've got the rod back out there. It literally went in my hand. Didn't even have the chance to get the bobbin on. So he's ran out into the deep water, which is nice. Let's hope we can get this one in, man. Please, please be kind to us. have it finally a bite from Bear Lake from what's been a real tough couple of days in peg two been lucky enough to put some rods out rounding the left hand side of peg one so the shallow bay that is behind me here this is where a lot of the fish are spending time at the moment on these shallow parts of the lake which we never had in peg two so we're lucky enough to now be in this little bay here for the very last day in the hope that one of these big Slovenian giants that live in Bear Lake turn up sometime soon. But in the meantime, it's nice to finally get that first bite. Wicked. There we have it. Nice. After that first bite, the bites just started coming thick and fast. Okay, he's off of that. Right, let's go. Tail rubbers here. There he is. Crazy. Right, back to the bank. Other rods going. <laughs> it's all come good in the end. This is like our final night now, so for it to come good like this right at the end was much needed. We, uh, we had to work our socks off in that other swim, but it just, it just didn't, nothing happened. They just weren't there. They're in this shallower water. So the move into this swim definitely paying off at the moment, without a doubt. Hey. Sorted. Whew, nice to be getting bites again. <laughs> Oh, it was a relief getting them two carp in. There were a couple of 20 pound commons, but now, you know, I'm obviously getting bites, getting the momentum going. Going into that final evening, I definitely had great expectations. We had to leave early the next morning to head home. And with the night being quiet, I was wondering whether it was all over. But then just as dawn broke, I have my first early morning bite. Now not wanting to obviously lose this fish, I just jumped straight in the boat and then headed off where the fish had just bolted right out the back of the island. Now it had actually swung round to the left hand side of the island and it was rounding some reeds the other side. Luckily I'd managed to get him out into the open water and there out all on my own playing what I knew was going to be my last carp of the trip. I couldn't help but feel, was this my moment? How's about that for an incredible way to end what has been a phenomenal adventure in the wonderful country that is Slovenia. With epic fish like this, this adventure has been truly amazing from day one 
right up to the very last minute of this gorgeous fish that's in my hands now. Amazing, amazing country, amazing place, and amazing people to go with it. Right, let's get you home so we can get home. Wicked. So that was it. We went to Slovenia with expectations of catching a real big end. And although that didn't happen, it was still an epic way to have ended the trip. Now, it's easy to feel disappointed, especially when these trips don't quite meet our expectations. But carp fishing's not all about just catching fish. It's about the scenery, it's about nature, it's about relationships and the people that you meet along the way. But it's whatever you wanna take away from the whole experience. But may your next trip live up to your expectations.